Good morning. It's Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, A Christian Marriage, and our scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where the Apostle Paul writes, A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. If her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, but only if he loves the Lord. This year will mark the 40th anniversary of my ordination to the gospel ministry. In that time, I've been asked to officiate many weddings. I only bowed out once, and the reason was of biblical conscience, not expediency. It was a matter of faith, more accurately, a lack of faith. The bride-to-be was a professing member of the church, and the groom-to-be was not. It came out in the first counseling time that the groom was a practicing agnostic. He was a nice guy, the kind of guy you'd like to hang out with, and not particularly antagonistic towards faith. He just had no interest. He said he'd never stand in the way of her faith, but just didn't choose to be involved. Enter the advice of St. Paul. The whole idea of marriage is knitting two souls together, not just sharing a name or obtaining a common address. One of the symbols for marriage is a heart with two intertwined rings with a cross at the center. This image pictures what scripture describes as two people loving the Lord together. Of course, living in a land where freedom of choice is held in much higher esteem than any words written in an ancient book, The couple had a hard time accepting what I tried to share with them, that they were asking God to bless something which God does not accept, the joining of light and darkness. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? It's been long held by many theologians that Paul's first letter to the believers at Corinth raised so many questions, his second letter was an answer to their letter asking for explanation. As a church full of new converts, this is anticipated. They had asked Paul for guidance in marriage and family life. And as with the couple, I counseled sometimes the truth is more than you want to hear. And from this side of the counseling room, it's also not an easy truth to speak. There were many tears shed that day, and that turned into anger. It was not pretty. The bride-to-be expected a perfunctory session of a few platitudes, and then let's get down to the real business of planting the flowers and reception. Having the preacher tell her she was making a mistake was more than a surprise. It turned everything upside down. What she couldn't see is that God was showing her the right side up. She had this perfect hallmark snapshot in her head of a wedding day, with her being the center of attention and all the adoring looks and comments that would come her way. She was thinking of a festive, happy wedding day. She hadn't considered all the other days of marriage that would follow. But God wanted her to focus on what a life and soul shared with an unbeliever would be like. She could not stand for that and eventually left the church. I heard later that the couple did marry and divorced shortly after. I write this not to gloat or to be proved right. God's word is always true and right. The likes of me is hardly needed to validate what Jehovah has already pronounced. I merely hoped to head off the misery the couple was courting. As a minister who's charged to love the sheep and tell the flock God's truth, I could do no less. In retrospect, I can truthfully report that I felt no joy in any of it. But one can scarcely feel guilty for telling the truth. For you today, if you are planning a wedding, or it's much later and you're planning on exiting a marriage, It might be the best investment of your time to stop and consider if you've been looking for the best-looking, best-providing, or best-whatever kind of mate, rather than the kind of person you admire for his or her commitment to Christ. 
The fact remains, you can choose an unequal yoke of being a believer married to an unbeliever, but you will also be choosing against God's perfect will for your life. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.